morning, everybody. It is the start of a new week, September 20th, uh, Monday. Um, kind of a busy day ahead, but uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting this one as kind of an early one before I, things start piling up on me. Um, one of the things that was always interesting to me was being in, in L.A. and uh, especially spending a lot of time in Hollywood back in the 60s, uh, playing clubs, seeing bands that, that were there, everybody from Sly and the Family Stone to Sonny and Cher when they were Caesar and Cleo and um, Jimi Hendrix, uh, The Who, playing in clubs. Um, it, was, it was such a vital and um, exciting scene that was going on during those years. There was one club here called The Experience, Marshall Brevitz's club on Sunset, where any given night you'd go in and, like if some band was in playing, you know, a huge band like um, when Chicago was still CTA and they would have played a big gig, they would come and jam afterwards at, at, the, um, at the Experience. So there was lots of stuff going on. And I remember um, one of the bands that, that I saw several times was The Doors. They were always on the scene here, you know, with, with the guys when Jim was still alive. And uh, one of the things that, that got interesting to me later is, you know, I, I didn't develop a relationship with these people, but I, I saw them and I, there was a familiarity about them. So, like, the first time I went in the studio with David Crosby and Graham Nash, I was familiar with... The birds and, and CSN and all this, so it was it was always kind of weird. You go in and you go, oh, you're the guys, you're the guys from that, and it happened on numerous occasions for me as as my career started opening up, and seeing a lot of these artists that I had seen uh, from an audience standpoint, and and um, so it was interesting to me when uh, when I got called to do uh, the Doors album. Uh, full Circle, uh, which was, you know, I, I, this was after Jim had passed. This was, I believe, the second album that they recorded after his passing. Uh, the first album was kind of a continuation of the album that they had done prior to his death. I think that had L.A. Woman and all that on it. Um, but this was their actual kind of getting into the studio uh, as as a trio now and then bringing in other players to to join them on it. They were singing, but... <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Um, so it, it, to me, it was, it was really a, an interesting experience um, to go in there and see Ray Manzarek and Robbie Krieger and John Densmore sitting in the room going, well, hi, guys, <laughs> you know, kind of a, a, a trip. Um, but uh, this album was produced by The Doors um, themselves, and um, Hen the great Henry Louis engineered it, and Henry was... I, th I believe Henry did Blue with Joni Mitchell. I did lots and lots of records with, with Henry. He was pretty much on staff all the time at A&M, and we cut this there. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead. I believe I might have played one of these songs on a much, much earlier video. I started to dig back, and uh, now that I'm way up in the you know, the 700s now. It's real. It's a little harder to keep track of things, so I figure I would just throw it up fresh, and if, if it's a duplicate of anything I did, that one of the songs I, I think I did um, earlier, but uh, it's it, all, so much of this stuff is worth revisiting and rethinking about and, and talking about again. So I'm going to play um, three tracks from Full Circle with The Doors, and uh, then talk a bit and then get off and get going. Got to wake the puppies up and get their breakfast going. And uh, I've got two interviews to do and a song to cut for somebody and uh, a whole bunch of stuff, some appointments to make to get some work done around the house and all that kind of stuff. I got to get my eyes checked. <laughs> I think this prescription is long overdue. Uh, I knew something was weird when I started going in the studio and having to take my glasses off to read the chart, where when I had these glasses done, I had the bottom, like a bifocal part done, at the distance of a music stand so that I could look across the room, see the conductor 
kind of like a movie date, but have the chart in front of me, and all of a sudden now it's it's changed, and uh, I need to address that before too long. So uh, I'm going to get started here. This is the song. This was actually the song from the album that charted for them off of this one, and uh, and it's called the Mosquito. And so here we go. The Doors. No me moleste mosquito, no me moleste mosquito, why don't you go home? No me moleste mosquito, let me eat my burrito, no me moleste mosquito, why don't you go home?
lives. A little psychedelia going on there. I had to put my shades on and just get into my kind of, you know, Fillmore mood here. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was sad when when Ray Manzarek passed. He seemed like such a, you know, vital, healthy guy, and all of a sudden, when I heard he had passed, but. The uh, the only guy out of the group that I that I pretty much have crossed paths with a n- num- number of times is Robbie Krieger, and uh, when we did our um, uh, it was the Rock Legends cruise, um, just before the last thing the immediate family did before lockdown when pan- when COVID hit, um, Robbie and his band were on the ship also, and we got some a chance to hang, and we reflected about this album and just how much fun we had working together and stuff. So uh, it's, uh, it's cool to, uh, you know, to have these memories of these people and know that they're still working, you know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's one of these things like everybody would always thought, you know, like rock and roll, anybody that played, they'd be gone by 30 years old. Yet kind of the first generation there's still some guys from the very earliest days of this. I mean, they're old now, but they're still playing and stuff. It's like seeing some of the like doo-wop shows on uh, uh, public television, and they put together, you know, they get together all these these old groups from back in the in the fifties uh, into the sixties, and uh, they start singing. And you go, holy crap! That's, they sound great. They sound just like they did back then. You look, and it's elderly men and women in these groups now when they when they can find the original members but um boy they sound great so there's really there's no end in sight i mean the end of your rock and roll career i think is when you're gone <laughs> that's it but till then you can you can just keep on rocking as they say so here's another tune this is hardwood floor
not part of the record. Um, that was my um, Peace Love bass on that that I used on James's records and Billy Cobham and um, Jackson Brown's album, Doctor My Eyes and all that. That was the only bass I had until we built Frankenstein. So everything I did up to Frankenstein was on the old Peace Love 62 jazz bass. Um, I just thinking back to, to to being in the studio with these guys, and in those days, like at A and M, it was always amazing. There was so much vitality in this industry. You'd be walking down the hallways, and there'd be, you know, Richard and Karen Carpenter. They'd be in one room working. It's like Harry Nilsson would be in another room. It's everybody would be gathering in hallways and just talking and hanging out and stuff. It was amazing. It was just one of these periods I've been asked many times if there's anything I really regret about my career and what I've done. And I, I always say that one thing I truly regret is, first off, I didn't know I was going to have a career when it started. I was happy just to have a gig, and, and it still feels that way. But I wish I would have had a camera with me from day one, first time I walked in the studio with Brian Highland. Um, to have taken, even if it was a Instamatic or whatever, to have taken a, a picture of the artist, the band, the, the engineers, the, the room, because so many of the studios are long gone now, um, and just to have had that thrown in my gig bag and uh, and just every day take pictures would have been something. If I could go back in time, that would be one thing I would absolutely have done. Can't do it now, so. It's, it's just all memories at this point. So here's one more tune. This is called It Slipped My Mind. There we go. It feels so Doris. You know, it just doesn't slip my mind. It just doesn't slip my mind. Just don't 
Oh, yeah. Oh, stop it, stop it. What a trip. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. Just every time I hear any of these things, I just, it really does send me back into the Wayback Machine. Uh, I really enjoy it because I just haven't heard any of this stuff for so long. And uh, it's fun to find those moments again. So um, I'm going to get going. Got lots, lots to do here. I'm going to get this, this going. Uh, don't forget, uh, this coming Wednesday is the Clubhouse uh, live stream. Um, again, I am thanking all of you people working every day trying to keep this ship afloat and all this. And all I can do is implore those who haven't, unless you absolutely have some very specific medical issue, and there are some that, that would make you not be able to do this, get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated. Let's get this behind us so we don't all have to be sitting around wondering if our tours are going to happen, if our theaters are going to open and close, if restaurants are going to shut down again, because the numbers just keep climbing because the, the more people that are unvaccinated, the more there's an opportunity for more variants to come in. And it's a huge part of the world that still hasn't even been able to start vaccinations yet. And, uh, and they're begging for them. And here we sit with a surplus of vaccine and people going, no, I don't want to get one. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know what's in it. Just get it. Just get it. It is the right thing to do. Okay. I will see you all tomorrow. And uh, it was nice seeing the doors. Yeah, it's a, what, a, what a trip. What a trip. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.